an inexpensive, lightweight, portable satellite antenna rotator with automatic tracking. We'll take a look. Today we're going to take a look at a very inexpensive, lightweight, portable satellite antenna rotator with automatic tracking that's made by an Australian group called SARC or SARCnet, which stands for the, the School Amateur Radio Club or the School Amateur Radio Club Network. Uh, the, the intent is to educate children of all ages on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM topics uh, through the use and application of electronics, kits, and stuff that they actually do. Uh, but they also sell. So one of the, the outcomes of this group is Sark Track now the Mark III or Model III, a, an automatic satellite antenna rotator and controller, which will control a single satellite antenna, both azimuth and elevation. Does a great job of it. Uh, we'll, we'll walk through setup and, and actual use of it. One of the great features of this automatic rotator and controller is the fact that it works with a number of software programs that you configure yourself and it's wireless. It works through Wi-Fi, so it cuts down on the cables and the, the amount of wires that you have running to your, your controller. In my case, I'm using SAT PC32. Uh, I'll explain a little bit on how I set it up and uh, walk through using that to track the satellite and control the rotator. So before we get too far into the video, please click on the subscribe button and the like, like button. It helps with the, uh, the algorithms that, that uh, pop my videos up in, in your searches. All right, so uh, this is basically what you get with the kit. So this is what arrives in the mail, uh, the kit. When I was first looking at it uh, online, I thought that uh, this was more of a kit that I had to do some assembly, which looked kind of tedious. But I was, so I was happy to, to see when it came that it was actually all assembled in, in, the, uh, in the container in the box here. Uh, so you get that, that element uh, and it comes with the Wi-Fi uh, dongle on the end already wired into it. Then you get a separate USB Wi-Fi dongle a uh, band clamp to hold your wires onto the, your your mast, your tripod, or whatever, and a little bag of assorted uh, hardware, including the uh, uh, the mounting plate, two mounting plates for the azimuth and elevation, and then you get this little sheet. It's basically just a packing list, not much more, and it states that they're in regulatory compliance, which I'm of course happy to see. And then there's the stuff that you have to fabricate and acquire yourself, and so this is aluminum, angle angle aluminum, uh, not angle iron. You got to use aluminum, non non magnetic. And then uh, you got to find have a way to mount your antenna to the tripod. And so this was my solution. My I'm using the MFJ tripod. The shaft on it is a three quarter inch. So I bought three quarter inch PVC pipe. But you really need for the uh, the mounting plate, and I've already mounted this on the on the PVC cap. But this PVC cap really needs to be an inch or bigger uh, in order to put this mounting plate on it, because otherwise the screw you won't be able to get access to the screws on the inside. So uh, I've got a a reducer that will take this three quarter inch and and make it one inch. And then I've got a barrel for the one inch that adds a threaded option here. And so this end cap for me is threaded, which is great because that way I don't have to glue it in. Um, I just, just screw it in as long as it's unscrewed during rotation. But this goes right on my tripod, the, the shaft. And, uh, and then they recommend for the counterweight, they've got a, um, some suggestions on hobby boxes that you would just melt lead into it to make the required 1.75 pounds counterweight. But uh, I didn't have those aluminum cases uh, and I didn't, didn't feel like waiting to get one. So I just bought a little wooden box at the hobby shop. And then I'm gonna, I bought a, a bag of uh, 
weight, lead weight for scuba diving. And I'll just take the little lead beads out of this and probably epoxy them into this wooden box. You don't want them loose inside, otherwise when the antenna is shifting, they may rotate, the weight of the the the, uh, the shot may, may shift and cause some variations in the antenna and the pointing. But uh, so those are the, the parts. This is what you need to, to assemble. And then it's just a matter of putting it all together. I have an aero antenna that will, will attach to this. I think it'll work also with, you know, anything similar like the, uh, the elk antenna, but I have both, but it seems to be better designed for the aero antenna. So that's, that's what we'll go with is the aero antenna. And here's the completed antenna rotator mounted to my MFJ tripod with the PVC adapter here, a three quarter inch to a one inch cap fixed on there with just set screws under those little brackets here. The angle iron, you had to drill out the holes here to mount that plate on there. Uh, and you have to have the appropriate balance point there. For the weight, I've added in the shot, I just mixed up a little batch of epoxy, and then I just mixed the, the shot into the epoxy and then just put it all into this case, this little wooden craft box. And then I glued the, glued the craft box together so that it's, it's pretty solid now, and there's nothing to shift in it. And that will fit right on the end here to add the counterweight for the antenna. And here it's kind of an ingenious process. So instead of stepper motors in the in the the, the, the gearbox here in the motor box, it the, the motors run continuously and they are fed with this is both a compass and an inclinometer that will tell the you know the angle of inclination of, of the bar here, and the compass will feed into the, the motors, and it constantly updates the, the pointing of the antenna. And then the, the Wi-Fi dongle adapter here is wired into all of that so that you have the control from, from your computer, tablet, whatever, and, and there's uh, the dongle that just plugs into the USB port on your, your computer. But that's, that's a complete setup. Sark track can be controlled both manually and by and automatically by one of your favorite satellite tracking programs, in my case, SAT PC32. To control it manually, we open up PuTTY. You need a terminal program, and probably the most common is PuTTY. So we'll go to that. We're using serial as a connection type, and in my case, it's COM port 3. And I think the default speed is 9600 automatically. Now, if you want to save these settings, you can enter enter the name here, Sark Track. But I've already done it, so I'm I'm not going to resave that. But I, I go select my Sark Track, load, and then open, and it brings you to the blank screen. To wake up the Wi-Fi dongle, you hit Escape three times and it brings up the full you're now connected to it but the motors aren't aren't started so to start uh, start the motors s and enter and now the motors have started and so your rotator is is started up if you look at the list of, right above that it'll show you which characters to use to control the rotator make it move in different different directions. The instructions with Sark Track will kind of walk you through this because you have to calibrate a little bit in it. Uh, for one thing, you have to set up the, the fail safe. There's a, a string, a lanyard, which you have to kind of wind the rotator around to get to a certain point, and then you tie off the, the lanyard. And that's so that if you get a runaway rotator that it will disconnect itself the lanyard will pull the cord apart it's just johnson power poles uh, on the on the, the cord so for the automatic uh control we go to 
the tracking software, which in my case is SAT PC32, so we'll open up SAT PC32. <laughs> So we open up SAT PC32 and it pops up. Now, if you have issues with the COM port here, um, you can open this up here and go to setup and then you can set, you can set up the, the COM port in that. But I've already done that, so it doesn't matter. We'll minimize that again. And then here you have SAT PC32. Here's the satellites. Uh, we actually have AO73 is passing over now. I'm going to click on D for the rotor to start tracking it. And since we're already, it's already part way over, the, the rotor will actually rotate to the correct azimuth and the appropriate elevation, which it is doing right now to acquire the satellite. As it reaches the location of the satellite, it, then it slows down and it will basically just slowly track the satellite all the way to the loss of signal. So we've reached loss of signal and once the satellite is no longer tracking, the rotor will automatically come back to zero degrees azimuth and zero degrees elevation uh, in park mode. KC1 MEB, this is WK3 Uniform, Echo Lima 89, over. EB, Sarah, this is Mike, KO4, PDI, gotcha, up in Connecticut. KO4, PDI, I'm actually roving Fox November 57 in Maine. Well, that's the satellite antenna rotator and automatic tracker. Uh, for the price, it's a really good deal. It's a decent kit, and that price is 350 Australian dollars, which at today's exchange rate is less than 250 bucks US. Plus, if you're in the US, you have to pay a $40 shipping fee, but considering the distance and the current postal rates, that's actually not a bad, uh, not a bad deal. I did reach out to the SARC, SARCnet folks, and one thing they advised is, like all electronics manufacturers in the post-COVID environment, they are suffering parts shortages. And so the only thing I say is be patient, but thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the, the video and I hope you got something out of it. And uh, 73s.